language that everybody here can easily understand. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh, I, say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. What we got here is a failure to communicate. Welcome to the Uncommon Communicator Podcast, where we are here to bring enlightenment to the topic of communication. Today, I am pleased to have Keith Bailey as a guest. Now, Keith has a passion for public speaking since experiencing a seminal moment while delivering a book report in the fourth grade. From hospitality industry to global corporate sales, he has learned the power of storytelling for profit, influence, and fun. During his 16 years as a coach, eight plus years as a Toastmaster, and ongoing involvement in the National Speakers Association, he has learned good speakers are created and not born. To give everyone the opportunity to live life well-spoken, he co-founded Articulated Intelligence, a communication up-leveling firm where they developed with one word, a gamified storytelling technique to up your communication game and help prevent, and I love this, unintentional audience abuse. Let's uh, welcome Keith. Uh, well, Keith, welcome to the program. Thanks, James. Absolute pleasure to be here. Yes, that unintentional audience abuse thing, it uh, it happens. It happens to the best of us, and it has happened to the best of us. <laughs> it's we've sat. I sat in one recently. So tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, so Articulate Intelligence is... Our focus is is helping people with with, with the spoken word, with with oral communication. Uh, AI, artificial intelligence, has come out with with Chat GPT. Right, you type in a question, gives you all the answers you need to have. Well, articulated intelligence, our form of Chat GPT, is good plain talking, and a chance to how can we engage and and get to know each other. And from a networking standpoint, our philosophy and our belief is a focus on putting the person before the profession. And part of the the reason why all this came about is people with the really, really great ideas oftentimes don't know how to get them from from their mind into their mouths and to articulate in a way that where they're heard, understood, and their ideas are bought into. While those who talk pretty all the time get their ideas heard, bought into. Well, those aren't necessarily the best ideas. People with the best ideas that that have them locked up, our goal is to help you find the confidence and, and the voice to be able to, to share your ideas where they're heard, they're seen, they're understood, and they're bought into. We truly believe that when we're able to do that, we can create a better world. So our entire focus is to help you live a life well-spoken. I love that. And I love that part about speaking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> We've all met the pretty talkers. <laughs> well, I've been looking forward to having you on the show for a long time, and I keep a board up of you know ideas, future podcasting ideas, and I've had network up there for a long time. Mm-hmm. A lot of my podcast is, hey, I want to get better at this, so I'm going to study it. I'm going to talk about it, and then I become better at it. And the network kept dropping down at the bottom of the list because I'm, I'm honestly, I'm terrible at it. Uh, it, One of the things that I do the worst is following up. In in my world, if you're in my world, uh, you get all my attention. Uh, High school, uh, early career, and you know, when I left California, I moved to Colorado. If you're in my circle, you're in my circle. But once I leave that circle, I'm, I'm the worst at following back up with those that are behind me. And in general networking, I can come and I can try to talk pretty with you at an event. But am I going to, you know, am I going to follow up with that? You know, there's a, probably not a good chance I'm going to. So hopefully, or not hopefully, I know that you're going to bring us some tips and help us be better at networking. Why is why is even networking important? Yeah. Networking is important because it's, it's, it's relationships. It's the people that are in our community that, that we need to maintain that relationship with because one, we're, we're communal being, uh, two, the, the, there's, there's a couple of uh, things about networking. I think, uh, to, to speak to what you just mentioned and we think that networking is going to an event or going somewhere meeting new people. That's that's only twenty five percent. If you if you're going to spend let's say four hours a month of intentionally like I'm going to put time aside to network four hours out of the month, three hours of that, so seventy five percent should be spent focusing on reconnecting with the people that are already in mm-hmm. your network, and 
reaching back out to them, whether it's a text message or uh, what Ross Bernstein, he's a professional speaker, part of the National Speakers Association, he calls getting scrappy. <laughs> Pick up the phone, call people, get scrappy. And and many of us these days, uh, you're in construction and people in your space have a chance to go to the go to the site and you have a commute. Well, for those of us working from home, I, I don't have a commute. So I've created a commute hmm. to where I will drive somewhere. It's it's uh, uh, then while I'm on my drive there and on my drive back, I pick up the phone and I just make phone calls. And oftentimes we get voicemail. It's like, hey, James, driving around, just uh, thought I'd reach out to say, hey, that's all that it needs to happen. And hmm. when you get that message, you're like, oh, Keith was thinking about me. I'll, I'll give him a call back. Or usually it's like my third or fourth phone call that I make where somebody actually answers the phone. And the intention here is just to have have a chat, have a catch up. And the easiest conversations that we can have a catch up with is when we know something personal about that individual. Because for me to call you every time your phone rings and you see me calling, you know it's going to be a business conversation. You're like, I don't have time for this right now. Mm -hmm. But if we have a personal relationship, you'll make time for me. And we can just have that quick, easy, fun conversation and we have a chance to catch up. So the importance of building and investing in, in what we call relationship equity, right? that knowing, that liking, and that trusting and doing that intentionally makes it a lot easier for, for us to pick up the phone and, and have a conversation. I, I remember the, the luncheon that you and I had. Right? We, we've had a chance. We've met through Toastmaster. We've had a chance to get to know each other. When we had that lunch together, we had such a great time just getting to know each other, which every time we see each other, we just kind of pick up where we left off. We all have those friends like, oh, God, I haven't seen this person in six years. Every time we call, we just pick up where we left off. That's the objective you're looking for with people in your in your network. So nurturing is is a huge part. So that seventy five percent rule will, will if if all you take away from this entire conversation today is I need to spend more time reconnecting with my existing network and do it intentionally, you're going to be a better networker. And how far is too long in reconnecting with somebody? A, The longer the wait, the the more difficult it, it it becomes. So for me, what I have is I utilize LinkedIn quite a bit. And in my, you have all of your chats that you've had. So I do a lot of outreach through that. And I have those personal conversations. So it's easier for me to reach out and look within the chat history. Because when you and I have a first connection, first time having a conversation, we connect on LinkedIn. I send a message to you immediately like, hey, it was great to connect and talk about X, Y, and Z. Have fun with blah, blah, blah. And I share that personal piece. So the next time I come back into that again, I have a chance to, to, to come back to that conversation. Ah, oh, the last time we chatted was this, this, and this. How was Johnny's baseball game? We can pick up where we left off in, in that regard. Uh, when we have long swaths of time that, that pass by, it's still that personal connection is the easiest way for us to pick up where we left off. But if it's all we've ever talked about is work, how am I going to nurture my relationship with you if it's just purely transactional? Nobody wants a transactional relationship. No. And you, so you make a great point about making that connection because you're right. If I'm looking at my phone and Keith, Bailey, Keith Bailey's calling me and you know I know he's going to ask me about, hey, when am I going to get paid? Or you know, just all that business side, then that those are the conversations that you put off, and to make that connection, I think, is really important uh, to go to be able to go back and make those long term connections. Because you've really made me think about the people that I would still love to be connected with, but I feel like it's been too long. And you know, if I call them, because the, the, I this happens to me, it's like, uh oh, you know, if I get a call from you know, typically somebody from my family, uh, it's who died. Or some, you know, it, what terrible news? Why are you calling yeah. me? It's got to be terrible news. We're not there to check up, and that happens, I think, in a lot of our relationships without that that connection and that tie-in right yeah. there. Yeah, which is why if if it's been somebody's been a while, you've you've chatted with that that I'm going to come back to that personal side is so so powerful is just to reach out to them. It's like, hey, I was I was thinking of you. I was doing this, I was driving here, this certain thing made me think of you. And I know it's been a while since we've chatted. So I just thought I'd reach out. Give me a call when you get a chance. Hmm. 
right? Like go back to what it, what it is that the foundation of the connection is, is built upon, right? What is the equity within that relationship? Huh. I love that. Cause I, I saw a truck of a, a guy who had left our company and, uh, and it was another same company truck and I saw it. And so I called him, I guess that's kind of that same idea, right? Something that triggers it, that makes it a, a fresh idea instead of just, you know, calling in out of the blue. That's a, yeah. No, that's a great tip. Yeah. Or you know, that calling out of the blue, it, sincerity and honesty is 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 huge. Is it's James, it's been two years since we've chatted. I I know that you know we we used to work on the same project together and you know, time time changes things, but I just want to catch up. How how have you been? How how's what what's and this is a great opening question when you have that uh that initial dialogue with them. And it's the same question that I utilize when I meet a stranger that I want to get to know is I ask a really big question. And the big question oftentimes has a first, a best, a last, or a worst in it. Hmm. And the the best one that I like is what, what's been the best part of your year? What's been the best part of your summer? What, what are you looking forward to coming into the fall? What, what, is, what is on your, right? What's looking into the future? Let me give you a, a quick uh, story on this uh, from a professional standpoint. Because I do this with with my clients when I get in conversations with them, I ask that personal question because I want to get to know them better. And uh, I'm on a conversation with a with a standing client. Uh, we have a a session that we're going to be talking about that's coming up, uh, a, a gig that we're doing together. And then I want to pitch him on additional work for the future. And I asked him the question. Is, I think it was January 10th. It was of this year. And we get on. I was like, so. Uh, what what what's been the best part of your year? I mean, we're we're into a new year. What's been the best part? I'm just happy that I have a job. My company's been going through a lot of layoffs, and it's been it's been really difficult. I've had let some people that I'm really close to. I've had to let them go. So I'm just just happy that I have a job. Wow. That asking that big question, him being that open and honest with me, uh, we had a chance to talk about that a little bit further, but it changed my tactic of the next thing that I'm going to have a conversation with, because what I'm not going to do is try to sell them on future stuff. This guy's got a lot of heavy things going on. So we eventually, the conversation pivoted on talking about the uh, uh, the project we're currently working on. And then we wrap things up with, I, I hope it gets better for you. If you ever need someone to talk to, I'm, I'm here to, to, to chat with you about it. And Let's schedule our next conversation because we show up oftentimes in, in, in the world and into conversation with an agenda. But if that other person is not open and ready to be able to, to take that on, that, that's, you're, you're going to have a negative impact on that relationship equity. Because if I would have just sallied forth and be like, and I want you to buy all these additional products and services, he'd be like, ah, this guy's just not – even listening to me yeah and it, you, the one thing i've noticed uh, for myself and i think where we're turning as a society i don't know if it ever really did work but the pushy salesman idea uh oh. the coming in with the network of that relationship because we can see it a lot of people can feel it um you know 100 miles off right like if this, this is all we're going to do is get to the sales pitch at the end then i've already turned i've turned off texts before or you know, instant messages where it just was straight to the pitch. You know, there was no care, even for me wanting that product in particular either. Uh, they just want to get to their pitch, which is unfortunate uh, where that networking you're saying is a little bit deeper than, than just uh, making, you know, making the phone call. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the intentionality behind it. I'm going to intentionally create space to, to connect with you as a human being. Bus business is going to happen. W work will come up. Whatever conversation you're in, it's part of our culture code, right? We, from the very beginning, the founding fathers, uh, you know, they, they, they did the Declaration of, of Independence and we got that and they're like, all right, we got to get to work. So work is part of our identity. But the hard part also, especially if we're looking at talking to strangers and meeting people in, in a networking environment, that presumption of that somebody has has a has a job and just to dive into that. Well, what what if they're in between? What what if they just hate their jobs? What if they just got fired? Hmm. We're we're not being considered of the person. And people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. 
And it was actually a boss I had uh, back in 2008. I got my first desk job ever. And my, my job was to do cold calling, smile and dial. Have you ever had a chance to do that, James? You ever I done know, smile uh, and dial? Not once. Oh, it is. It, it's really, really difficult. And I stepped into this thing. I had a ritual. It's the same ritual that I actually use now for, for networking. It's to get myself into a mindset. We can talk a little bit about mindset in a moment. But I, I would pick up the phone. I, I'd start making my calls. And I remember one call that I, that I made. I reached out and dove right into it. Uh, my name's Keith. I'm with this business and where we do custom socking apparel and you're with a, you, you've got a team that you ride on. And I'm not even sure if I got that far, but that was my talk track that I was aiming for. And this guy just goes, just goes, hold on, stop. How'd you get my number? I was like, uh, to my database. How'd I get into your database? I'm like, I, I, I really don't know. Somebody else built the database. I'm just reaching out to you. I want to, I want to talk to you about apparel. He's like, He's like, I, I don't want to talk. About, uh, he's, he's like, I want my, I want my contact information out of your database. I was like, I'll tell you what. As soon as we wrap up our conversation, I'll, I'll go ahead and remove it from our database. And he's like, this conversation's over. Click. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I sent him an email. <laughs> <laughs> it is not over. It's yeah. To let him know, I understand. This is who we are. I've gone ahead and removed you from our database. But I had a lot of failures like that. Just back to for for like a solid week, and at one point, my boss comes up to me. His name's Dave Edwards, and he's like, "You're you're doing a great job. You're on the phone, awesome." He said, "But you're always leading into in into this into the pitch, and that's not what people want. I I, I want you to try something. I want you to call people up and sell them nothing, but an opportunity for a conversation. You're in the cycling industry." They have a love for cycling. There's that commonality. Talk about biking. That's it. And let them come around to like, and why are you calling me again? Wait for them to ask you that. And I, and I did. And it changed everything. I called on a lot of bike shops. That was a huge part of, of, uh, of our business was bike shops. And you get a mechanic who's got his, you know, he's wrenching on a bike. He's got his, the, the phone to his ear. And, and, and if you're here to talk about this, he's like, yeah, I don't have time for that because I'm waiting for a customer to call. He'll hang it back up again. But if you're like, hey, I, I, you know, what, what's what's been what's been the best part of your day? It's like, oh, you're working on this trek, Madone, doing this, that, and the other. And I always rode my bike, and I would do everything I can to just lean in and talk about biking, ask him questions, and then eventually he would come around, and be like, wait a second, so uh, uh, why why are you calling again? It's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm with Primal, we do custom apparel. Um, who should I be talking to about that? Oh, you want to talk to the owner? He'll he'll be here in about two hours. Two hours later, I call back up again, get the same guy. Like, hey, are you still working on that Trek Madonna? You onto mm -hmm. something new? Oh, I'm on to this this specialized bike now. And we talk about that a little bit. He's like, oh, you know, by the way, by the way, the person you're calling for is in. Let me transfer you. That changes things when you start putting the person before before your profession and before your goals. That's what starts building that relationship. That's the, that's the small investment into relationship equity that is going to lead to a long term relationship. You know, it, it, it where relationships really pay off is is not with a mindset of what what am I going to get out of this. I think that's a really uh, myopic way to to move through the world is what what's in it for me. Those people don't mm -hmm. don't do really well. Like one of the best things you can do if you if you want to be a great strategic networker is become a connector. Find ways of connecting people in your network to 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 other people. Well, and let's jump into we'll, we'll talk about that mindset. I want to learn more about that because my big question is: say I know a guy, it's not me at all, who is just terrible at networking, and he could. Some of our listeners could really use your support, and I'm asking for them. Uh, can you yeah. help guide us towards some key tips in networking? And you know, I'm certainly feeling like there might be some mindset involved in here. Maybe I haven't had the right mindset. So, what can you help us? Yeah. And understanding some key skills to network. Yeah, that, that, that mindset piece is is huge. And one of them is when you're going to move into let's let's just go with a traditional networking event that is uh, uh let's set a stage for this because networking events they're, they're all they're all they have their own unique signature. So let's 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 go with a generic networking event where it's a it's a room full of people that are they all belong to a, a certain organization that has invited them in and 
really nobody knows anybody else. It's not it's not even within your industry. Let's let's go outside of your industry, just just random people. Part of the mindset piece is is having a goal. Why why am I going to this? What do I want to get out of this event? Or what do I want to put into this event? And it can be something along the lines of I want to have uh, three meaningful conversations and then make one connection of somebody that I can follow up with in, 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 in a future date. By setting a simple goal like that, you're moving in, you're, you're being intentional. So when you're looking to have those conversations, uh, you're, you're, you're doing that with the, the objective of meeting your goal. And what's great is once you've met your goal, you're done. You can leave. Networking doesn't fill everybody's cup. In fact, it, it, it fills very few people's cup. It's, it's stressful. It's, it's draining. I don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert. The only difference between an introvert and an extrovert in a networking is the introvert becomes stressed and they become a little bit more quiet. The extrovert, this guy, is when I get triggered, I get stressed, I become more talkative. Hmm. So I have the tendency, if I'm not careful and purposeful and intentional in my conversation, I dominate. Hmm. I'll talk the whole time. That's not good. Net, an introvert doesn't talk at all. There, there's no dialogue here. Mm-hmm. So it's really get to that middle ground of, of, of the ambivert. So having that intentionality, I'm going to step in. This is what I want to have happen. The other part of the mindset is usually something, uh, something physical to get you moving, get your heart rate up a little bit. Uh, I do a, uh, uh, an exercise that's called, whoa, this is exciting, where I physically say out loud, whoa, this is exciting before I move into that room. Like I'm walking up to it and I'm, you'll see me stretching a bit like I'm just waking up. I'm like, whoa, this is exciting. Whoa, this is, I, 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 I shake a bit. Right? You look at a dog that's stressed. They'll physically move themselves to to shake off that stress. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a a client that we've worked with, and I love her technique from a mindset standpoint, is before she walks into that room, she takes a pause, she takes a couple of really deep breaths, and she says to herself, not, not necessarily even out loud, I belong here and so does everybody else. I belong here, so does everybody else. And then you move into the space. So I think that is from a uh uh from a pre-game standpoint, like pre-networking, have a goal of what you want to achieve and then have that, get yourself in the right mindset. The other thing that I do from a mindset standpoint, let me ask you a question, James. When do you usually show up to a networking event? And what, what, where is the networking event in its, uh, in, its, in its evolution? Are you there before the event even starts? Do you get yes. there? Do you get the rise that starts? Do you get there at the height of it? When, when do you usually show up to a networking event? For me in general, if you're not 10 minutes early, you're late. So okay. I typically like to show up at any type of event like that, uh, at least 10 minutes to 15 minutes early. I'll be there 30 minutes early in my, tr- in my truck waiting because I don't want to be too early. But yeah. I'll go in, I'll scope it out. I see where everybody's at. And, uh, and maybe this is an age thing. I'll see where the bathrooms are at and the drinking fountains. I'll okay. see where those are at. But before I step in, usually early, definitely want to walk into something uh, not late. Perfect. I, I love doing that as well. That is part of my tactic also. And my reasoning behind it is, is by showing up early, there, there's only a few people there, usually other early people. I've got mm-hmm. something in common with them. They're early people, right? The easiest way to connect with someone is, is, is to have that commonality. The other reason why I show up early is if my intention is to show up to this event and network, who at that event knows most people that are showing up to the event, the event organizer. Mm-hmm. What I like to do is I show up early. I find the event organizer. I introduce myself. And then I ask, is there anything I can do to help you get set, a, set up? Is there mm-hmm. anything I can do to help you be successful? Now, I, now I'm here and I have a purpose. I, I, have, I have a job to do. And if that job is like, oh my God, yeah, would you mind putting these things up on the tables? I'm walking around helping out with this and and I have I have a task and now I can also engage with with other people. So when people show up, they start trickling in. I'm already active in that space. So it's almost like now now this is my house. Is how I, the mindset that I put myself in is is when you throw a house party, you say hi to everybody that comes in the door. So I smile, I engage with people, I I welcome them. They're like, "Oh, do you work here?" Like, "No, but still, 
welcome. I was actually just helping out the event promoter. But what also happens is now the groundswell comes. People start coming in. I'm already in conversations. I, I'm, I'm lubed up right from, uh, from, from a speaking standpoint. By the time the event gets to its halfway point, I've achieved my goals. I can leave. Leave, leave on a high note. Leave when things are, are, are at their height. The hard part is, for I don't care if you're introvert or extrovert, if you show up in the middle of that event, it is daunting. It is difficult. Mm-hmm. People are engaged in conversations. You know, you kind of like, oh, I guess I'll just go to the bar and have a drink, which, which is not a networking strategy. <laughs> the bar is not, is not a strategy. The bathroom is not a strategy. Um. It is okay in the middle of those events to 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 go outside and, and refresh, to step out of everything. Well, and you made you made a great point of probably why I don't like showing up in the middle is people are engaged in those conversations already. And I find a lot of times if you get there at the tail end, you're also getting more of a tired uh, individual, right? They've where they're talking a lot, and you and that's very true. And I would have always considered myself in the past to be an introvert type person, but I have changed. I now, depending on the event, gain energy from it. Most of the time, I'm getting energy from these type of activities. Uh, mm-hmm. There's not very few that really drained me. So I've changed my mindset in regards to that. But coming in and finding the hanger honors, those are the ones that tend to kind of hinder my networking because I I do, I tend to ask a lot of questions. So before you know it, they want to talk to me and I haven't had an opportunity to really shake as many hands as I had intended to do. And I, one of my big boo-boos is finding, trying to find, if I'm in that, stuck in that conversation, is trying to find a way to get out of that conversation. And also, uh, and I, this was, this happened to me recently and I felt bad about it is I'm looking over and they, they, they know, right. My attention is now lost with Keith Bailey and I'm looking over here. So I've broke that with, which was a good opportunity for me to make that connection. That was not a good approach. And that's kind of a mistake I've made recently. And, and, you know, you, you avert your eyes, you don't realize how much eye contact is going on to you or avert your eyes once and they follow you. They're like, what did you see as yeah. well? But, how do you yeah. handle those type of hanger honors? But but also knowing back to that intentionality that you brought up, like I'm here not to talk to or listen to, in some cases, one person. Yep. You know, I want to make those connections with multiple people. How do you break away from that? Uh, with honesty. <laughs> Truly with, with honesty, because you're you're laying the foundation of a relationship. So honesty is 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 great, and it's when I first heard these words uh, from my my business partner Elise Bloom, who has had a networking business for the last ten years. A lot of what I I've learned I've learned from her. She focuses on uh, uh, getting a positive RON, which is a return on your networking. Right, mm-hmm. you're making this investment. What are you getting out of it? In a networking environment, we are all here to meet new people. There is absolutely nothing wrong with identifying that. You know, it's been because there's a natural ebb and flow to a conversation. And if we've ebbed and we've flowed and we've, we've connected on a personal level and we know a little bit about each other professionally, even that's that's kind of the, the, the initial foundation. So it is that it, it's it's, you know, I've really enjoyed this conversation. And if you're honest about this, like and I would welcome the opportunity to to, to keep this conversation going outside of, of, of this place. Are you on LinkedIn? And they're like, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. This, this is this is verbatim what I say. Are you are you on LinkedIn? Like, yes, I'm on LinkedIn. Do you have it on your phone? I do have it on my phone. I sh- have you seen the uh, the way that you can utilize the QR code that's on uh, on that LinkedIn app? I yeah. connect with that person through that QR code. I make that connection, and then I let them know is I I showed up here with the intent to have three. I share my goal with them with with three mm-hmm. meaningful conversations. This has been such a great conversation. I look forward to having coffee with you, lunch with you, or having another chance to to connect with you, staying connected on LinkedIn or whatever it may be. Is uh, I came here with the intention of, of of really making three connections, and I'm so glad to have met you. Um, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go chat to chat with somebody else, or ask them. Is like is anybody here that you've chatted with that I should that I should know? Or you can also pivot no. back over. Is, is anybody here that you haven't connected with you'd like to meet? Now you're becoming the person who's, who's introducing. They're like, well, who do you know? It's like, well, I met the event organizer. Have you met the event organizer yet? Like, I have not. Like, you want, let, let, let's go find him real quick and I'll make that introduction. 
that is an honest and genuine thing that is from an from a networking etiquette standpoint is totally okay to do. I came here with the intention to do this. This has been great. I'm going to go chat with somebody else. Would you say what that- you don't want to do? What you don't want to do, James, is um, this this uh, a great conversation. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go hit the bar up real quick, and they're like, "Oh yeah, cool. I'll go with you." You're like. Damn it! Um, I, oh, I'm I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Oh, I'll go with you. What, what what's happening right now? Uh, I'll go I, with you. <laughs> it just got weird all of a sudden. Just, we just got weird. Uh, but you can't go to the bathroom in the bar every single time because mm-hmm. somebody's like, "Well, he's got he's got he's got an issue." But that that honesty is it's been great chatting with you. I came here to connect with with three people. Uh, let's let, let let's stay connected on the LinkedIn. And here's the, the the important part with the LinkedIn piece. I don't carry business cards. I don't own business cards. Because I believe in a, a in a, in a, uh, a healthy start to a relationship. I know that person is not going to be like, we're doing business together. It's, it's, we need, it takes time. So LinkedIn is a great place to keep that conversation going. Because what I do is after I've made that connection and likely uh, either right after the event or after the connections happen, I go into LinkedIn and I send them a, a message on LinkedIn that has a part of the personal piece that we spoke to. Right, we spoke about something that we have in common or something that they love. Uh, I will follow up with that. I ended up connecting with this guy, and his son was just accepted to Purdue on the rowing team. I was on the rowing team when I was in in, in college, so we had a great rowing conversation. As soon as that conversation was over, I went on LinkedIn and I sent him that message. Because mm-hmm. if I'm talking to six, seven people over the course of a night, I not necessarily maybe remember all the details of that conversation. But if I send that little note real quick in that moment. That's personal. And there's a connection there. Yeah. And I, so what I like, what I'm hearing is one is having that intentionality. I like that honesty part as well, too. But it seems to me that you you also need to be a little bit of a driver to be able to step away from those conversations. And I think that's a practice, right? Yeah. Is that's not something that, and, and I'm getting from you, especially as extroverted as you are, uh, that, you know, that's something that kind of, you know, you've ingrained in how you operate, but, you know, somebody who's less, um, maybe more introverted, they can still take the practice of applying the honesty. And then also you do have to drive. It's like, Hey, this has been great. You know, those are all things I think that are skills that get, get practiced in yeah. the networking. Yeah. I, I want to take a moment, James, and, and also address that, that, that side words glance. Cause sometimes you go to a networking event, you're like, I really, I need to connect with, but that person. I really mm-hmm. want to talk to that person. So I, I've, I've done this and it works beautifully is you, you connect with someone, you start talking to them and you just let them know. It's like, Hey, if you see me looking over there, I've been trying to get that person in conversation. Uh, I, I need to talk to them. So if you see me looking at that, I'm just seeing if they're, they're breaking up and if they do break up their conversation, I, I'm going to have to wrap up because I, I think they're about to leave or I'm about to leave, but let them know that that is happening. It's it's back to that just just being honest mm-hmm. and, and open with someone. The the other part like that staying that focus piece. If you're able to do that, that is it's so difficult, but it is also so powerful because if someone is just focused on you and all these things are happening, mm-hmm. but they they maintain that contact with you, you you flood them with with dopamine, right? That feel good release from the mm-hmm. brain. Like this person's really interested in me and there's a great quote by dale carnegie which is uh, in order to be interesting be interested mm-hmm. don't make it about you do your best to make it about the other person I, I was at a networking event for uh for the national speakers association so a whole bunch of people who who, who you know spew a lot of hot air like i do <laughs> and and i'm having this conversation and i see somebody to the side like keep just come by and i like, try trying to get my attention trying to get my attention and i was like you know what i'm I'm in the middle of this conversation. I'm going to stay focused. And a little bit later on, they came up to me like, dude, I was trying to trying to get your attention, you know, the, this this whole time. I was like, I, I understand that, but I'm really working on my intentionality in conversations. And they 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 pause it like, I so appreciate that. Hmm. I so appreciate that. I mean, that that's really hard to do. I'm like, yeah, especially when somebody is like, I'm over here. Hey, over here. I was like, I wasn't ignoring you. I just wanted to be in that conversation and be present with that person. And that is almost fresh and new again, 
because I've been the victim of that where they're, you know, you know, that apparently I'm not interesting enough. They see who they want and they're out. Like not even, yeah. not even using good etiquette in response to that. But the idea that was so much distraction, there was one uh, gentleman I was talking to, and he's one of those that have a lot of words, right? Just kept going and going and going. And then asked a semi open-ended question to me, like, so what's new in your life? And then we're literally checking emails during that time frame, and it's so you knew it's like okay, you needed to pause, right? Because you're you were thirsty or something, and then went right into those uh, emails. It was just so um, deflating, really, because uh, that's. But I see that a lot, you know, especially oh, with the phones, right? You see it happen in restaurants. You see it when you're talking to people. It's like you know, for me, and this is, I have to be very careful of that. You know, I've got the iWatch mm -hmm. that'll shoot a message to me and yeah. it, it becomes, it's nice. It's handy, right? Cause I have it linked to my phone to where I don't, I don't ever have my ringer on, but it'll tell me if, you know, somebody's calling or texting, but it's distracting. And to your point of that, that uh, eye contact and focus when you don't, it's so refreshing anymore for somebody to really be interested in me. And when I say me, I mean, anyone is saying to be, you know, someone to be truly interested in them is that one. It's so rare anymore. That connection is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Put, put, put it aside, you know, from a, if you're going to step into that space and, and you're going to give yourself that permission to, to be there for the next hour and a half present in that moment, nothing wrong with setting an alarm for yourself but then turning off all your notifications. And if you've got the smart device on, on, on your wrist, is turn off all other notifications and just when that alarm goes off after 90 minutes, turn it off and, and give yourself that permission to leave. It's part of, part of your goal. My goal is to be here for 60 minutes and present in the moment for 60 minutes. Like that, that's a great goal. And then, and then do that, be in that moment. And you first time through, you might only make it 30 minutes out of that 60. And it's okay to be kind to yourself. Like, all right, I made it. I made it thirty minutes. I'm gonna go step outside, check my messages real quick, and this. Back to that transparency is, if you're having a conversation with someone, and it, it, it's going well. Let's say you and I meet meet for for lunch. If you know that you're expecting a, a very important email or phone call. Be open with that in the very beginning. Set mm -hmm. that expectation. Hey, just want to let you know that in about 15 minutes, I'm likely going to get a phone call that, I, that I, I've got to take. By all means, I completely understand that. Mm -hmm. But if we're in the middle of talking and all of a sudden your 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 phone, like, oh, you're talking, right? You're like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hold, hold on a second. Hey, yeah. What was that? Like, what am I, chopped liver? Yeah. Yep. So having, it's back into relationships. That's, that's what all this is about. It's, it's relationships. So when you're having that first conversation, everything you're doing is, is the person is judging you. Everything that you do. So if, you, if that's how you're acting in the very beginning, the knowing, I don't really know you. I mean, you were never even there. I don't, they don't really like you because I, I, don't, I don't know you. Trust you. I trust you to not be present in conversations. I think about how the other person is is uh, is judging you. They're judging you by all of your actions, everything that you do. One thing I really like about uh, anything in our communication is having like an acronym or something that's uh, you know memorable for me. Do you have any type of acronym, or how how do you how could you help guide me in a networking situation with some advice? There's, 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 it's, 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 if I put an acronym to it, it's, it's the PPN. No, 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 it's, it's, it's the pen. It's the pen, the PEN, the pen. PM. Prepare. Prepare yourself for that networking event. Show up early. Uh, prepare by, by moving things out of the way and off of your calendar and, and your reminders to, to be present in that moment. Prepare by having, having the, the goal that you want to achieve getting there. Uh, prepare by getting yourself into that mindset. So that's 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 the P. The 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 E is 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 engage, engage with people. Find somebody who is standing by themselves and go over it with a smile on your face, and and introduce yourself. If uh, uh, if you're in a group of of people, 
let's say there's three of you speaking to be a good steward, to be open to inviting other people in is you don't want to be a closed circle. You want to be, you want to be an open circle. So if you're on the end of it is, is just take one foot and spin it out and open that shoulder. That's inviting. The other thing is when somebody steps into a conversation, they are being brave. They're taking a chance, especially if they don't know anybody. A thing that you can do from an engagement standpoint is if you're not speaking, somebody else is talking is bring that person up to speed. Hey, we were just talking about, uh, uh, about Corvettes and about cars. Just bring them up to speed. That That's a nice way to engage. Now now they can join in the conversation as opposed to kind of standing on the outside looking in. From an engaged standpoint, when we look at our tradition, we're still in our traditional networking environment, right? Where, where we don't know anybody. People are going to ask you the question, what do you do? It's just we're programmed that way. You can answer that one of two ways by talk about what you do. But if we have a focus on putting the person before the profession is to, to answer it with a personally I. So whenever I get asked, what do you do? Because oftentimes when I say that I'm a, I'm a public speaking coach, people will, will, will tell me that they hate public speaking. Don't necessarily want to go down that path. So I start with a personally I. For, uh, personally, I'm embracing my midlife crisis. <laughs> And I get that response every time because it's because like yeah it, it's a human thing like I can relate I'm you know I'm 51 when I was 40 I was like God oh, that midlife crisis I got another 10 years before I get there if somebody who's 60 you're like yeah been there but then the the next part that comes after that, after I get the chuckle is uh, or somebody will ask me but how are you doing that so like, well, I'm I'm uh, learning to become a pilot of remote control airplanes <laughs> which gets another laugh and then i pivot into it because it's cheaper than owning a corvette and it's less drama than dating somebody half my age and of the three still own my wife approves of what do you like doing personally will be the next thing that i ask so i've shared uh, it's it's called conversational threading i've given you several things that you could you can grab onto that we can have a conversation about. We can talk about midlife crisis. We can talk about uh, airplanes and, and remote control planes. We can talk about cars. We can talk about dating women half our age. Uh, we can talk about our wives, right? I, I'll let you know that I'm married. I gave you so much the little details that we can have a conversation around. That's called conversational threading. But then when I pivot around and I ask you the personal question, oftentimes people are not ready for it. I, and this happens all the time. So it's like, oh, um, I like biking. Well, there's not a lot of threads in that. So what I do, I take this responsibility is, oh, really, what, what kind of biking do you like? Mountain biking? Do you like road biking? Are you more like a casual biker? Do you have an e-bike? Like, t- tell me more about biking. Like, oh, I do mountain biking. Oh, fantastic. And now do you like downhilling? Do you like cross-country mountain biking? Like, what kind of mountain biking? Like, oh, I like uh, I like cross-country. Oh, what are some of your favorite places? You're like, I will turn into a dentist and I will pull as many teeth as possible in order to get information from that person and, and help them with the conversation. Hmm. Intentionally to help them. And along the way, somebody talked about, like, oh, I love love uh, cross-country mountain biking. It's like, oh, yeah, I love that too. Have you ever done a trip to, uh, to Crested Butte? Like, oh, I love Crested Butte. Or I've never been to Crested Butte. I will help with that dialogue if I need to. So that's, that, that's, that's the engagement part. The other engaging part is when you do get into that professional piece and somebody asks you, what do you do? Do your best to avoid answering with your name, title, and the company. Hmm. What you really want to get to answering is why you do what you do. That's what you're working towards. And what you can do in this is is a choose-your-own-adventure. You can ask a question. Somebody asks you, James, what do you do? You can ask them with, how familiar are you with construction? Like, uh... I'm currently building an ADU on the back of my house. Oh, tell me more about your ADU, right? You're now leaning in, asking them questions about their ADU, get them to talk about that. And then what you can do, this is such a powerful thing because oftentimes the things that we do, people don't fully understand. You can then relay that. Well, that ADU that you're building, imagine that being a bank and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's three times bigger. Well, the things that you, you've got a, a, a foyer that you walk into, well, a bank needs to have a, a larger foyer. They need to have these things in it. You can start bringing the parallels between something that they mm-hmm. know and tying it into what you do. Because if you go into talking about the details of, of your business in construction, 
I don't know anything about that. I'm going to glaze over. This conversation is no longer interesting to me. Right. So ask that question. What do you know about? How familiar are you with? Whatever it is that that you do is a great way to, to help with that dialogue and conversation. Let's talk about the third engagement. We've stepped into a conversation. They've asked us, what do we do? We've answered it personally, or we've given that that professional curiosity by asking them a question. The other one is, is if you have a chance to engage in the conversation. So we meet, we connect. I'm going to ask you a big question that has a first, a best, a last, or a worst in it. What's been the best part of your summer? What's been the best part of your year? Is this your first time? Is this your first time coming to uh, to, to this networking event? Is this your first time coming to, to this organization? Oh, it is. How did you find out about it? Or it isn't. You've been here before. You know, I'm really interested in in possibly becoming a member here. What are some of the member benefits that you that you like about being a member here? So having that big question in your pocket that you're able to ask opens up the door to now you're making them the expert and give them a chance to talk. So th- those are the three. So we've got prepare, engage. And then lastly, it's nurture, nurturing your network. If you're going to network for four hours, three hours of that should be spent connecting with the network that you already have. And when you have that personal connection with them, it's, it's a really easy way to follow up. Yeah, those are great. And, and of course, I love the acronym, prepare, engage, nurture. You said a couple of things that are brand new to me which is okay. conversational threading. I love that idea. The other thing I'm noticing is your ability to ask the questions correctly. You know, they we talk a lot about not asking yes or no questions because you'll get a yes or a no. That, yeah. Does that seem to be one of the biggest qualities or best qualities of somebody who is networking? And I would say human yeah. to be a human being as well, but to network is to ask questions. Yep. I just, see, I did that in a yes or no question. <laughs> so, but the idea yeah. is ask it, being able to ask questions and, and to get that dialogue going is another skill set, I believe, of any uncommon communicator is being able to ask questions and get people to open up, feel comfortable. And that sounds like all of those skills you tie right into uh, this networking response. Yeah, it's, it's, it's curiosity. Mm-hmm. Curiosity, just I, I've come to to really believe that in in all facets of life, it's it's about having that curiosity and and being uh, be, being a learner. I right? is 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 I just I want more information. I want to continue to to grow and and to learn. So when I find myself whatever wherever I am, because networking also let's talk about networking within within the uh, within the business. Right, the people that you're working with, we spend a lot of time having conversations with them that are not work related, and and it's an important part of 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 building the relationship of that relationship uh, equity, that re- relationship investment that we're making. Uh, when I worked at a at a corporation and having a conversation with the uh, the, the president, he's like, you know, I just. It's really frustrating. He's like, I just don't feel like the, uh, the a lot of the team members know me. And I was like, I, I I can see that. And I think part of the reason why that is is because you park in the west parking lot. You come through the west door. Your office is located on the second floor of the west side of the building. You come through that door, walk up that staircase, and, you, and you're in your office. And then you work, you, you talk to people that are, that are in that area. What if you were to park in the east parking lot? And then find a different way through the building. And all you have to do every single day is just walk in and say good morning to people. Good morning. And if somebody that engages with you and says good morning back, you can ask them an, a big open-ended question. And it doesn't mean we're going to be in conversations the entire time for the next hour, but it's that visibility and it's that being human, I think, is is the the, the the big thing that we are missing in our work relationships is that that human factor. You know, I know you can do your job, but I want to know something about you. So intentionality behind our actions. Okay. 
thanks, Keith. <laughs> this has been great. Well, I'm just I, there's a lot processing in my mind. Sure, sure. I'm like, you know, where are we gonna go with all this? So you gave us some really great advice, and we're we're gonna wrap this up. And there's a couple of things that uh, we have to do uh, is to size this down to what I call the UC moment or the uncommon communicator moment. Those who have been you know listening in intently as I have, you know, for the last 50 minutes are gonna say, what am I gonna walk away with? I love giving people like one thing to walk away with. And what do you think is the most important thought that somebody could walk away with today from our discussion? One of the best ways to to move through this world is 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 really with with curiosity and and an honest curiosity in in other people. And when you have that curiosity of of wanting to get to know the person, the, so many things become easier because it, it's it's a it's it's a specific focus that I have wherever I go. I want to I want to engage with with people now. I, I want to make a, a, a statement on this also. Whether you're an introvert or an extroverted, right? How you identify uh, it, yourself. I believe that there is the ambivert. There is there. There's the coming together of those two, and you can create that. Uh, I believe in the Shakespearean. All the world is a stage. You need to choose the character that you want to have show up on the networking stage. And part of that character's core values is curiosity. Let that be part of that that character who you're going to be for that hour and an hour and a half, two hours, however long you're networking for, is when you show up and you've you've got yourself in the mindset that that this character that I am here is a character filled with curiosity. I want to get to know people, and it's going to make networking so much more fun. I love that. I mean, that's a perfect UC moment. To have honest curiosity. I mean, that's that's fantastic. That's all we need with that. Yeah. And, and somebody you- who's curious and somebody who's curious asks big questions. Yeah, it, it, like back to your point, true curiosity. Instead of being vague, you're like really interested in that person. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be the key to being in any networking situation. So that's fantastic. Thanks so yeah. much, Keith. Yeah. The big question for you is how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Th- thanks so much for asking. Uh, there is, if you're looking for just some of the content that that Articulated Intelligence has, it's uh, uh, www.articulated-intelligence.com. Uh, because I'm a baller on a on a budget, uh, I think the the domain name was like two hundred dollars with the dash. It was like ten thousand dollars without the dash. I'm like, I'll, I'll go with the dash. Right. So it's dash <laughs> intelligence. Uh, then also uh, Keith uh, Keith Bailey on LinkedIn. I, I'm sure we'll have those linked in yes. the show notes. Uh, but there we we post on a weekly basis, and it's articles that are around communication. So a large part of our business is focused on the the corporate stages that we take. Networking is one of them. That keynote that you deliver, that boardroom presentation, that elevator pitch, all of those are where we use words. <laughs> So that's really what we focus on. And our uh, our emphasis is really around storytelling. And we help people really live a life well-spoken by uh, starting to look at their life and their life experiences through the lens of a storyteller. Well, again, Keith, thanks so much for being on the podcast. You brought so much value to all of our listeners. You left us with the UC moment, which I put you on the spot for. Everybody needs to know that. He did not know he was bringing the UC moment. <laughs> Typically, I sum it up and you nailed it. You were thoughtful. I loved it. And it's great. It's you know that yeah. honest curiosity. So that's what, all. What I like about that UC moment and something that you did that we should all do when you ask a big question like that is you gave silence. And you gave me a chance. You created the space for me to be able to think about how I wanted to answer that. So when you're networking the next time, you ask that big question, create the space and watch the person and let them process and think about that. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate it, James. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Keith. That's all we got for today. See you. Bye.